I want to start by saying what an incredible honor it is to be inducted into AU's Hall of Fame. I truly couldn't ask for anything more other than to be there in person to share with so many of my family, friends, and friends I consider family to this day. But as my remarks are intended to tell you, so much of my story and success at AU came from the unwavering support from many in attendance. Before I get to those individuals, I want to acknowledge my fellow nominees who are also friends. I was fortunate enough to work facilities while at AU, which I guess officially was my first ever job. I would help out in and around Bender Arena and on the fields, the best part being I'd be able to work while games were going on in any sport. In doing so, I saw and worked many field hockey and volleyball games. I was a fan. I watched Camilla and Denise win league championship after league championship, Patriot League honors, and even All-American honors. And I was happy to wipe off volleyballs before handing them to our servers so Coach Goldberg's teams could win too many championships and Coach of the Years to count. Adding character to a true dominance of awards and titles were all I saw from my fellow inductees throughout my AU career. So the honor of being a part of this particular class is mine. I first picked up a basketball around seven or eight years old. I did it for the same reason I kicked a soccer ball around years before, because my brother did it. For those who know me now, they may not know the annoying little brother I used to be. To this day, I'm a Minnesota Vikings fan, because one Sunday my brother and I were watching his favorite team, the Bears, play, and I just decided to go for the team they were playing against. But growing up, my brother played soccer, so I played soccer. My brother played basketball, so I did too. And I think for both of us, once we tried basketball, that was the end of soccer or any other sport. To this day, no one knows my game better. And a big part of my successes at AU was his analyzing my games year after year after year. In basketball, in life, in pushing forward, and as I've told so many to keep going in whatever path is yours, I look up to no one like I do my older brother Lou. And for so much of my success at AU, I thank him. I remember first arriving to AU with my parents and brother dropping me off at Let's Hall. The first person we saw just so happened to be my roommate, teammate, best friend at AU, and now brother, Sekou Lewis. Brother would end up being a term I'd use to describe many of my teammates that year, especially our class of five that came in together. Though a long time ago, that freshman season was one of the more memorable ones. The start of it was rough, but in a good way, I guess you could say. Preseason conditioning in my freshman year was and still is the hardest, most physically taxing thing I've ever been a part of. Those six weeks felt like six years while in it, and, while, and I made sure to drive back down to Richmond every weekend to get away because of it. I'd never been so beat, fatigued, and just worn out as during that time, but in never wanting to feel that way again, I made sure to train differently from that point on in the off-seasons, even today. In my four years as a member of the AU basketball team, not once did we make it to the NCAA tournament. We were actually closest that freshman season. We shared the regular season title in the Patriot League and made it to the tournament finals, losing on a, butter, losing on a buzzer beater. I'm not sure at that time if I thought it'd be easier from then on out and we'd make the tournament multiple times in the next few seasons, but that wasn't the case. And when things came to an abrupt end my senior year in the Patriot League semifinals at Holy Cross, I remember crying in the locker room because it was over. The awards and individual honors I received didn't much fill me at that point, in just about every way I felt I'd ultimately failed in my collegiate career. I did look forward to playing professionally the next season, but I think within that excitement was getting away from where I'd just failed. It took until the following March for those feelings of failure to subside. I watched our 2008 team in the Patriot League Finals. I watched in amazement, though not in surprise, at the team's talent, mental toughness, and brotherhood as they defeated Colgate, punching their ticket to the NCAA tournament. Now, if I didn't feel like a failure before, watching a team win the league's title right after you leave would really do it. But almost immediately following their championship win, many on the team, especially that junior class and the entire coaching staff, called and texted me to share in their excitement and personally, even intentionally, let me know that their moment doesn't happen without me. I honestly don't know how much I had to do with it. Actually, many of the players told me Coach Jones lightened up a bit, and that probably had everything to do with it. But the class that were going to win back-to-back -back titles had everything they needed in them when they got to campus as freshmen. Still, for them to reach out and say what they did to me cemented my career at AU, in my eyes, as a success and not a failure. I would name each of you guys by name, but I don't want to forget anyone. So instead, I'll do it like this. Whether I played dodgeball with you and we won a championship together, played in the fantasy football league with you, have shared in your own successes and sadness through the years, See you in the off-season to help you run or speak at your camps. See you in the off-season as you're just an hour and a half east of Richmond. Do current business ventures with you. 
shared in a group chat with you about a possible TBT run, talk to you about my wife and kids as you do the same to me about yours, and or just flat out love you as my brothers. I owe a huge thanks to each of you for what you did for me in my AU career and not the other way around. Last but not least, and save the best for last definitely applies as I conclude. 68,280 is not the amount of points I scored while at AU. If that were the case, I'd be in the Hall of Fame already. 68,280 is the amount of miles my parents traveled to watch every game of my collegiate career. My mother didn't miss a single game, whether home or away. My father may be one or two in four years. That includes a Christmas tournament in Hawaii and a trip to the University of Washington. Those would be the only two places they flew. The rest of the games, my dad drove what we called the Big Dog. It was a champagne-colored Mitsubishi truck whose entire existence, as far as I could tell, was to travel to support me play. <laughs> this all for me. Think about no matter what gym or field you play in, having what feels like home court advantage because your mother is louder than anyone there. Unashamed and all, I love it. And I love them both. Mom and Dad, I thank you for your unmatched support during my career at AU. And just so everyone knows, that support hasn't stopped. I play in Los Angeles now. They live in Virginia. So most games I played don't start until 10 p.m. for them and end at just past midnight. But neither will go to sleep until I've called them after the game, usually close to about 1 a.m. I would hope I can be exactly what they are and have been to me for my daughters, Malia and Navi, when it's their turn, and for the unnamed brother or sister due the coming June. My parents supported me like no other, raised me like no other, and would kill me like no other if I didn't thank God, the true Savior and best for last, for all that you saw from me at AU and any and everything you've seen and see from me now. My story begins and ends with him. I thank you all and hope to see everyone there as soon as I can. Thank you.